assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to the class of 20th century english poetry this module is designed for bs english semester 8 and ma english semester 4 the course code is 41339 and i am sumaya abid today the topic of our discussion would be ted use as a poet of nature so before we move straight to the topic uh, let's have an idea of ted use theory of poetry itself he says uh, in poetry in the making how can a poem for instance about a walk in the rain be like an animal because in that book he says that for him uh, a poem is same as an animal so uh, there is a very subtle connection that we need to understand if we really want to understand uh, uh, the use uh, use of uh, uh, natural imagery as well as animal imagery so uh, in that book he raises this question that how a poem can be uh, or for instance about a walk in the rain be like an animal and he answers it himself by saying he says it is better to call it an assembly of living parts moved by a single spirit the living parts are the words the images the rhythms the spirit is the life which inhabits them when they all work together so uh, he is talking about a poem that a poem is as alive as an animal is the point or uh, the point mainly is that a poem a poem is something that is not uh, dead it is not something that is only a collection of words rather it is uh, the one that has its own spirits and all its parts should be living uh, so Uh, and those parts he clarifies are words images and rhythms that together form an understanding and they bring a piece of work in the form of a poem to life he further says it is impossible to say which comes first parts or spirit means parts refers to words and spirit refers to the form of the poem but if any of the parts are dead if any of the words or images or rhythms do not jump to life as you read them then the creature that is poem itself is going to be maimed and the spirit sickly so the poem is going to be injured or uh, the spirit of the poem is going to be sickly if all the parts do not contribute to one uh, to uh, to generate one sense that is the spirit of the poem so uh, in ted use it is the spirit itself that is important and that spirit is something that is alive and um, uh, if we talk about his animal uh, animal poems uh, it is uh, it is uh, the the spirit that he captures in those poems as, as well as uh, the task of poetry itself uh, is capturing uh, those moments he is as much focused on the elements of nature as he is uh, on um animals it is uh, it is different that um, uh, it is another point that there is there are more uh, poems or the number of poetry that poems that deal with animals are more in number as, as far as uh, the uh, the poems dealing with nature is concerned but still nature is uh, second to uh, animal imagery um what he says uh, or what he uh, calls a uh, uh, true spirit that includes the uh, or that uh, has the use of five senses uh, in the poem he says words that live are those which we hear the click or the chuckle or which we see like freckle or vein or which we taste like vinegar or sugar or touch like pickle or oily or smell like tar or onion words which belong directly to one of the five senses or words which act and seem to use their muscles like fig or balance so i have um, uh, written these words in bold here see touch taste and smell that show the five senses and how they are important uh, as far as the use theory of uh, poetry is concerned um, he he carries on uh, he moves on to say that one thing is i imagine what you are writing about see it 
and live it and this is how one writes a poem do not think it up laboriously as if you were working out mental arithmetic just look at it touch it smell it listen to it turn yourself into it and this is um, where the true content of the poem lies turn yourself into it if we talk about his animal poems it is turning um, his self into animal or seeing the world from their perspective that make um, uh, his po uh, animal poems so prominent similarly if we talk about the his um, uh, poems on nature it is the understanding of the natural world or turning himself into the natural world that he is able enough to, uh, to represent that world he is writing about when you do this the words look after themselves like magic so when you are turning yourself into the object you are describing it is going to work magic if you do this you do not have to bother about commas or full stop or that sort of thing you don't you do not look at the words either you keep your eyes your ears your nose your taste your touch your whole being on the thing you are turning into words so is uh, so this is this quality of uh, did use poetry that brings uh, animals to life and that also brings the natural world uh, to life which did use presents in his poem so mainly what he talks about or uh, what he mainly deals with or what he for is he is focused on is the visual imagery auditory imagery olfactory imagery gustatory imagery and uh, tactile imagery so the five senses or the imagery related to the five senses if they work together or in or if they operate in a subtle uh, manner it is only then that um, a whole new being is created in the form of a poem and that poem mainly being the poem about nature so we move to uh, the main topic of the uh, of the lecture that is that used as a poet of nature and here i'm going to um, give a reference to a dissertation or thesis uh, presented by uh, uh, humaira sadiqa malik she calls in her dissertation um, ted used an eco poet a poet belonging to the environment or the poet who represents nature the center of his poetry is natural environment um animal being only one aspect of that natural environment but his main focus is natural environment he has celebrated nature but his treatment is different so there have been poets um right from the beginning of humankind who have been writing about nature itself but uh, there it is their treatment that make uh, them or sound them make them sound different So we see that uh, uh, Ted Hughes does not write for uh, just for the sake of writing about beautiful lakes, landscapes, flower, and greenery, nor simply for uh, human feelings and pleasures with reference to nature. Rather, uh, he is more focused on uh, representing the beautiful as well as the ugly creatures in the natural environment. Hughes has, um, uh, according to uh, uh, Ms. Sadika. Uh, youth has celebrated negative aspects of nature and he has explored hidden neglected and marginal marginalized species of nature and here my uh, species of nature refers to the landscape the river the mountains the flowers the creature life including animals and birds uh, that uh, she is referring to and uh, uh, they are all being mo marginalized in the modern um, a modern time so uh, it is through Ted uh, Hughes or his poetry that they find a voice in Ted Hughes um, the, na the nature itself becomes a character and pro uh, probably the most important character that he really wants to portray in his uh, poetry so we reach the point that um, uh, uh, why in Ted Hughes the representation of uh, uh, natural objects is important why nature itself is important and we see through or uh, after probing or after analyzing his poems that 
human is uh, the element that is a center of attention in nature poems if uh, if you remember uh, the lecture that in which uh, we were talking about the use of animal imagery in dead use poetry in that uh, lecture i shared the three phases of dead use uh, writing in the first phase I, I told you that he was more focused on the on the big and predatory and ferocious and violent animals in the second phase he started talking about animals in uh, but uh, 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 he talked he started talking about animals but in uh, with reference to human traits and in the third uh, phase he became uh, purely focused on uh, human beings so the human being is the uh, human or humanity is a, a major concern in dead use poetry and uh, it is it is being explored through means of um, imagery be it animal imagery or the natural imagery so he represents human condition during world war one uh, during world war two and after it he highlighted the aftermath of war through animal imagery because animal animal imagery manifests violence cruelty barbarism and suffering so they not only represent uh, this negative side but they also represent the energy vitality strengths and survival instinct so we see that ted use explores uh, the uh, the an uh, the animal imagery or the natural uh, imagery uh, to uh, in in its uh, in its purity in its pure form or rather to give a realistic view of what nature with all its negatives and positives is ted use poetry indicates the modern man's self deviant and successive alienation from nature so m lots of emphasis on nature suggest that uh, Ted Hughes is bringing the attention of the modern man towards his primal instincts uh, or his uh, primal responses towards nature he deliberately involves man by means of nature he ponders through means of natural world be it an animal a bird a flower river wind moon star landscape etc uh, uh, that abundantly appear in his poems his moods and methods of presentation reveal a similar variety so he not only um, uh, deals with his and the images that he represent uh, he presents in his poetry are not static even if when if we talk about a single image of moon there are many um, 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 many symbolic interpretations of this single image uh, as far as uh, Ted Hughes' treatment of moon is concerned, in every poem that is uh, focused on moon, the uh, the treatment of the moon or the mood of the poem in uh, or the mood in each poem is different. So uh, Ted Hughes propagates the idea of vigor mainly and vitality the natural world is capable of. So the energy that vitality that uh, the life that is full of energy and um, uh, liveliness he finds in the natural world and this is what he really wants to depict so nature is an important character which uh, Ted Hughes feels is being marginalized in modern world and needs to be uh, needs to be uh, needs to bring uh, in the forefront um, in this context uh, themes in nature poems uh, are as follows man in relation with natural world so the uh, major themes if man and natural world are the two important connections in his poem the major themes in his poetry become the question of human existence if that is the again ex an existentialist debate man's relation with the universe and man's place in natural world his own inner self that is the self searching or the very being of um, uh, of oneself human consciousness of natural world this consciousness is important because this is um, something uh, ted use believes is lacking in the modern man and he needs to uh, uh, and there is a need to make him realize uh, or, to, or to make him conscious of the natural world and its in um, its significance then how nature moves man 
to the philosophical and metaphysical queries about the status of man in the universe so like romantics or like many poets uh, in in literature ted use is also dealing with this aspect that how uh, the pondering or the reflection over nature moves you or moves a man to the philosophical and metaphysical debate and uh, in this context we see that nature the, or the natural imagery it takes two meanings one natural world itself and the second human nature we move to the analysis of the poems and i have selected few poems for uh, for your reference in order to explain the natural imagery or uh, in order to show how and why we call it used a uh, poet of nature so the very first poem that we are going to discuss is wind did use about uh, says uh, himself about wind in his book poetry in the making have you noticed how your mood depends on the weather all living things are natural barometers and change as the weather change our reason for our responding in this way is that is is that changes in air pressure and atmospheric electricity directly affect the chemical processes of our bodies and we experience these changes in our bodily chemistry as changes in our feelings so according to him it is the external environment the atmospheric conditions that uh, ha- uh, that have deep impact on human personality and it is the um, uh, uh, and he in other words um, calling a uh, good chemistry or it's probably the absence of this chemistry that he is um, uh, trying to uh, bring our attention to that external world corresponds to our inner world and um, uh, and or uh, we can say that the inner world sometimes correspond to the outer world and the good weather makes you uh, or turn your mood into good one uh, this poem um, wind is from hawk in the rain that was written in 1957 and um, we see that wind is an important uh, element in nature it is the part of nature as it appeared in his uh, and we see that uh, uh, this poem has some autobiographical reference and the wind uh, refers to the wind as it used to appear in the childhood of ted use uh, uh, that was um, uh, or at the house of uh, of uh, of his household house that was there in west yorkshire his parents lived in a house high on a ridge which was exposed to gales again winds the poem explores the effect of a strong incessant wind on the narrator as he shelters indoors so the main focus in the poem is the activity of um, uh, of wind on human world and how powerful uh, or how forceful the wind is and how human beings are confined within their homes they are taking shelters and at the same time are afraid of its powers uh, the poem is about the power and force of wind as i told you and it is written in six quatrains quatrain is the is a stanza of four lines and uh, wind uh, as you see it is uh, it refers to the elemental energy wind being one of the very important elements in nature and uh, one of the four basic elements the other three being a, uh, earth water and fire so uh, air is being one of them wind is not only alive rather it has its personality this is something uh, which we were talking right in the beginning of our discussion that he um, it, uh, the writer needs to or the poet needs to turn himself into the thing that he is present uh, he is presenting or he is talking about so the wind is not simply wind it is act it is actually a person a character and has its own personality man uh, on the other hand is shown as helpless in the face of its power and uh, we see that the major theme in the in this poem becomes power versus powerlessness and power being represented by wind and powerlessness being represented by human beings okay 
uh, here uh, for your reference I have just um, uh, taken this image and highlighted few words in green and uh, some are highlighted in uh, yellow and I have uh, um, divided the two elements the two things in uh, in by, by means of two different colors the one that is highlighted with green refers to uh, the activities of wind on the places or on the things described uh, the wind is uh, take uh, is having an influence on the house hills had new places the tent of the hills fields quivering skyline a grimace a magpie away a black bag girl the house again fine green goblet roots of the house move stones cry so this is all uh, this all refers to the movement this all refers to the movement of uh, the, uh, the uh, this all refers to the movement of the of, of the wind and its force on the other hand uh, the the words that or the verbs that define the power of wind are crashing booming stampeding floundering blinding mad eye burned dented drummed bang flung bent rang shatter it tremble it so keep this um, this image in your mind these words in your mind we move to the next slide where we are going to have an analysis of it so the question is how use um, envisages the wind how he gives a proper form and face to the wind we see that uh, wind is defined in terms of its activity on human and his world wind is uh, wind is being perf uh, personified he himself says in uh, poetry in the making in writing that poem i was mainly concerned with the strength of the blast the way it seems to shake the world up like a toy of a bo like a box of toys so this is and this image is important in the sense that it is um, uh, it, sh it is showing like the ultimate power is that of the natural world and the in the in the natural or the, or the world of the human being is just like uh, the box of toys uh, here box of toys being represented by the house in which the speaker is living man in this uh, in that sense is being dehumanized he is uh, uh, he is being diminished in his uh, power and strength a reflection uh, the poem uh, presents a reflection on man's might and it actually questions uh, man's power it questions the illusion that man has created about his might about his strength that the that the only and that only one element that is when shatters every illusion a man has about himself and then we see that uh, the technique of uh, onomatopoeia uh, that uh, is given in the poem in the form of sound of wind we sounds throughout the poem and um, the sound of the wind or the uh, or, or the strong consonants that are being used in the poem it refers to or it shows the uh, the strength of the or the force of the wind itself and very much uh, uh, like the thorp fox uh, the wind it's i uh, feel it starts blowing the images are so strong and the natural that is uh, being uh, presented is so uh, presented in such a way uh, okay it is uh, being represented in such a way that uh, uh, that the moment you start reading the poem when you feel like the wind has started blowing with all its strength poem uh, we see that it ends on ambivalent note what will become of the house the question remains unclear will the people living in the house will survive or not it is an unanswered question and uh, what is important is the tone and the mood of the poem and that is of an impending danger that something is about to happen and um, the wind is so powerful and um, when we talk about the wind uh, presented by that use we uh, um, and very naturally think of Shelley's Ode to the West Wind but the two are in very in stark contrast and um, in that poem uh, uh, the poem by Shelley he ends the poem in on a positive note uh, where he is talking about uh, that if 
winter comes can uh, can spring be far behind but here we see only a true depiction or the forceful depiction or, or powerful depiction of the wind itself okay uh, the next poem uh, that we are going to deal with is full moon and little frida uh, little frida as you know uh, was the name of Ted Hughes and Sylvia Plath's daughter. So the focus or the main character that uh, Ted Hughes is going to talk about is uh, Moon as well as little Frida. Okay. Uh, we see that the title of the poem juxtaposes two very important images. One is full moon and the second one is little Frida. The poem explores three relationships. Okay, the poem explores three relationships. And the, the first one is between nature and human. Uh, nature being represented by moon. Then between father and daughter. And third is, be, uh, is between art and artist. And this is uh, the last one is a very important theme that is common to his uh, to many of his poems. We see that moon in the poem stands as a symbol, um, and it stands for um, for an artist who has completed his task. And when an artist has completed his task, he receives back and uh, he views his uh, piece of work, his um, artistic achievement from a distance, and he he feels happy and amazed at his creation. So it's very much like writing poem. And uh, through this poem, what Ted Hughes is actually doing is he is capturing a moment in between a father and the daughter. He is making that moment eternal or immortal forever. Moon is as alive as the speaker and Frida is. Uh, so, uh, these are uh, these are few lines from uh, the poem. A cool small evening shrunk to a dog bark and the clank of a bucket. So cool small evening shrunk. Um, evening that is already small is shrunk to a dog bark and the clank of a bucket. Clank of a bucket refers that it, there is a complete silence. So the very first line uh, uh, is giving you an environment um, uh, or, uh, or an impact of an environment that is very cool and uh, evening uh, refers to the uh, it refers to that twilight that uh, um, that be a time of uh, the day where the day is turning into night so um, the, the the gray area the the midway of that uh, time of the day is important and so the the word cool evening they are important and the clank of a bucket represent that there is so uh, there is an there is an acute silence that even the clank of a bucket can be heard and you listening you is uh, the reference to frida and um, a spider's web tends for the dew's touch. So everything that is a spider's web refers to delicacy and dew's touch again refers to delicacy and uh, uh, Frida being the uh, being the participant in the scene also refers to being a child refers to delicacy so the en the en entire environment has an aura of um, another word uh, about it. Uh, now uh, we see that uh, the poem is a very short one but it uh, it's so powerful because it deals with or it presents very concrete images and very quickly uh, we see that it covers a range of uh, imagery we have uh, the animal imagery domestic natural floral and human uh, the words like spider's web dog cows in the poem referred to animal imagery and the, uh, the images related to domestic that again refers to the homely feeling the the words like a pail a bucket mirror and milk then the natural world itself that is being represented by first star dark river and moon uh, of the title itself uh, floral uh, uh, or the references to the flowers hedges and reeds and again the human image that is you 
that is Frida and the speaker in the poem that is Ted Hughes himself. So in a very short space he is uh, or through uh, the use of concrete images he is bringing or creating a world uh, and an atmosphere of that natural world where he is able to give voice to the relationship between him and his daughter. All images we see that they cohere and form an atmosphere where child's as amazement um, uh, which child is amazed at noon. So, um, uh, the important thing to notice here is uh, that it is, uh, it is through the medium or the means of natural world that Ted Hughes is able to create a moment. It is like he is uh, talking about the power of art and artist, not only that moment is being captured rather the experience of an artist is also being completed so the, uh, the, the if we sum up this poem we can say that the moon is amazed like an artist moon being personified in the poem who acts like an artist and who is the ultimate creator of this moment moon being the agent of nature is um, is is working as an artist and the uh, the the and his creation or its creation refers to that moment in which the father and the daughter are together so we see that the experience is completed the moment this very moment is lived and through this the art is created and if we talk about uh, this poem in terms of uh, thought fox the pages Printed. So the whole experience where uh, he starts or he, st he starts talking about the moon and he st starts talking about his daughter and uh, till very end of the poem we see the end result uh, the end result is the creation of a poem that is the pages printed. Uh, as far as uh, the uh, image of moon is concerned I would like to um, give a comment about this symbol with reference to another of his poem that is earth moon. Um, earth moon as the title shows connects two important elements in nature moon and the earth and these are the very first three lines of the poem here in the bold once upon a time there was a person he walked he was walking along he met the full burning moon full burning moon moon is being personified who comes in contact with the person as uh, we see that the uh, once upon a time refers to a fairy tale beginning and uh, the right from the very first line the poem gets this magical aura about it and as far as this poem is concerned uh, we see that the moon is being symbolized by uh, a woman who is according to the poem is killed by a man and um, and all and the moon's wound encircles the earth here moon is uh, has lost its uh, charming element it is rather uh, being victimized by an ordinary man ordinary man so um, uh, and moon is something that is big because it's being personified it is bleeding and its wound encircle the earth the magic and the romance uh, that is created in the beginning of the poem is um, by the end of the poem is replaced by uh, with the bloodshed and deterioration so what is important in the poem so um, what is important in the poem is to see uh, that how the poem represents uh, an allegory and uh, represents man's alienation from nature so in the first poem um, that we uh, just discussed full moon and little Frida the moon has all its positive um, and energetic uh, elements associated with it and he is being called an artist but in this poem we see that moon is something that is being shown as innocent and is um, and as it is being personified it is being killed and murdered by uh, by a human being and this very episode of one uh, of a story that starts with once upon a time we see that uh, uh, that uh, moon or moon being representative of nature is being deteriorated or is being uh, tortured or destroyed by human hand uh, to give comment about 
uh, the symbol of or the image of moon i'll move to uh, one of his uh, another poem uh, the harvest moon uh, the harvest moon uh, as the very words of this title are repeated we see that the, the words of this poem are repeated throughout the poem and like moon doubloon uh, and bassoon all um, um, keep us focused on the central image in the poem that is the image of the moon the presence of moon at the time of harvest this is what the poem deals with symbolizes fertility it also shows that uh, the moon is there um, as a, as a substitute for god god being um over presiding and watching human activities and getting happy uh for the uh, for uh, for the active for the struggle of the farmers they have that they have gone uh, that, that that they have undergone uh, through so um the harvest time is actually a reward from god here being represented by moon so we see in every poem the image of moon that is uh, being presented by ted use is different so um uh, it's just one instance where we can discuss that ted use is um ted use has so much to say about a single image and it is only uh, unfolding different aspects of uh, one single image so he does not rely or there is no particular definite uh, definitions of any uh, particular image from nature rather he explores different aspects of nature uh, by putting them into in different context if we talk about a simple uh, simply one image moon we see that the, uh, the moon represented in the three points full moon and little frida earth moon and the harvest moon in all these three points the treatment of moon being the agent of nature is different and the themes uh, are different as well as the treatment of moon is different uh, in the first poem uh, uh, full moon little frida moon is being called an artist in earth moon moon is a victim and and the third poem the harvest moon again the moon is empowered and it is a sort of a substitute for god himself the next poem uh, that we are going to deal with is snowdrops uh, it is a it is an eight line poem that is why i have uh, uh, put it here uh, the complete poem we are quickly going through it now is the globe shrunk tight round the mouse dulled wintering heart weasel and crow as if molded in brass move through an outer darkness not in their right minds with the other deaths she too pursues her end brutal as the stars of this month her pale head heavy as a metal so the poem that is about snowdrops we see that snowdrop is not being referred to uh, directly in the poem but it is mainly the poem uh, or the description about snowdrops that is obviously the name of a flower it's a white flower and uh, the very last line of the poem shows that it has pale head heavy as metal because it is upside usually upside down because uh, um because of its head that is heavy it's an eight line poems as as i told uh, told you earlier uh, but uh, it is short it is precise but very much focused and offers uh this image that is representative of nature it offers reflection in the poem something to think about uh, and we see that um, uh, there are there is a succession of images and we move from snowdrop to predatory weasel and crows to the final image of human in the form of her where where there is a reference to her okay um the technique a very important technique that is being used is um, is the technique of juxtaposition how the gush of images not apparently connected rather mismatched and unexplained so the uh, the images uh, the, the there are three types of uh, images that that are being talked about the references to the flowers animals and finally to human beings so all uh, they are apparently disconnected or rather they are mismatched the ultimate result is the is a confusion uh, is a confusion a confusion that is deliberately created to give it a mystic aura so we see that the poem is actually about transformation in the beginning it presents a tale of a shrunk world and a mouse in peril but 
by the end it becomes the story of a woman so uh, through an ordinary uh, image or through an ordinary flower like snowdrop uh, the poet gets food for thought and through uh, it the uh, poet gets a chance to talk about the, uh, the, uh, the woman or her plight the images like wintering heart outer darkness other deaths brutal as the stars pale all these images they are all in contrast with the beautiful image of the snowdrops the white flower and together these images they create bleak atmosphere a very somber and a serious atmosphere and together the, the all these images reinforce the theme of death grief fear confusion and loneliness though all uh, these four to five words death grief fear confusion and loneliness they are not directly stated in the poem but the images that the poem represents uh, th uh, through reflection of snowdrops it is uh, it, uh, it is being uh, implied in the poem the next poem that we are going to uh, deal with is woodbow Okay, uh, why I have selected this poem uh, for uh, for this lecture because uh, Woodbow uh, is it cannot is usually not categorized as an animal poem because Woodbow is a sort of a half man, half animal spirit of the forest. So uh, since it's more focused on focused on human, that is why I have selected this poem. Uh, second, the uh, Woodbow is uh, is the creature that is in search of itself and this search for the self uh, as far as this uh, searching is concerned in this searching it uh, moves into the natural world and it comes across different natural elements that is why i have selected the poem because it deals with the number of nat uh, the images dealing with natural world um, and the poem deals with the basic existentialist questions and the, uh, and we see that we move in the poem from uh, from who am I to I suppose I am the exact center and we see that there is an acute struggle in Woodbow for uh, to know me and name me okay the uh, 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 the images that we come across in the poem are uh, turning leaves over the air to the river edge I enter water frog do these weeds know me the ground rotten stump past uh, these trees roots 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 so all uh, these images the list of these images show that woodbow the creature that is half animal half human is in search of its identity and it is turning everything upside down and moving uh, moving in and moving through everything in order to find the meaning of its existence uh, here i have put this uh, poem um, uh, right in front of you uh, and uh, I just uh, I have simply highlighted the personal pronoun I and the and the words um, and, uh, and and the words like me my uh, for your reference if you look at simply look at the poem the I have highlighted only the personal pronoun I and how many times this pronoun is being used uh, Woodbow is probably the most uh, philosophical of uh, dead use uh, dead use uh, poems, and uh, uh, Woodbow, this uh, uh, this ambivalent, this uh, strange creature that is half animal and half human, is in uh, is in search. And uh, if we uh, look at the fifth or and sixth line of the poem, that states of the river above me, upside down, very clear. Okay, uh, uh, just focus on the first five lines. It states, what am I nosing here, turning leaves over, following a faint stain on the air to the river's edge? I enter water. Who am I to split? The glassy grain of water looking upward, I see the bed. Of the river above me, upside down, very clear. What am I doing here in midair? So if we simply look at these few lines, we see that it is a strange creature and it does not belong to a particular element. It can enter into the water. It can suspend in the uh, in the air because the uh, the uh, the line which states of the river above me upside down. It means that it the the creature can stay um in this in the surface or in the in in this um, at the surface as well as uh, beneath. 
the the bottom of the sea and it and the and it it has uh, its face is upside and it can see everything above it and if it is suspended in the air it can see any everything below it so it is going through each and every element in the nature in order to find the meaning of its existence so uh, a critic uh, uh, winds up or explains woodbow in these words woodbow is indeed emblematic as it stands for the state of identity crisis so the major theme in the poem becomes identity as well as identity crisis as the woodbow stands between two worlds as he is in quest for his roots as the proverbial woodbow he is caught between instinct and reason myth and reality freedom and rootedness so um uh, a woodbow is something that is a part of the entire world or probably it is the part of nothing it is um it is the relation or it is this subtle um identity problem that makes woodbow everything or nothing the next and the last poem in the uh, in the context is river and um, uh, i would like you to keep this image in your mind uh, so that we can proceed with the discussion of this uh, poem uh, river uh, is uh, not only a poem rather it is also the name of a collection of poems the collection itself is a sequence of 43 poems offering both description of river life and meditations on the spiritual and physical ecology and uh, the final uh, the very first uh, among these 43 poems the very first poem is the river and the very last poem is salmon eggs as the final poem um, as far as the image of or uh, the symbol of river is concerned did you saw rivers uh, as the as the source of life and link them with the mother goddess and creation um as we have uh, seen in another lecture uh, that was on animal imagery in ted use uh, that through crow uh, or crow poems ted use is trying to create a different mythology is trying to give new meaning to the crow mythology similarly it is um, it is here in river poems that he is trying to create a new mythology he is trying to give new meaning to uh, to uh, uh, to river and the marine life and he link them with the mother goddess and creation it is uh, here uh, interesting uh, to see that it is not the uh, christian uh, context or the christian connotation that he associates with river rather uh, all the images related to mythology and uh, the pagan world are also being associated with river he recreated the life in and around rivers in the animal and flowers associated with them he also referred to myths and legends especially the celtic myths about the salmon celtic being the oldest uh, language and the, and the celtic people who have their own traditions and like pagans they uh, they have their own cultures and uh, traditions regarding um, uh, or the concepts regarding god and goddesses the first image that is introduced in river is that of peta peta uh, is uh, the english word for peta is uh, Uh, pity and the, uh, pity is a famous painting uh, sorry it's a sculpture by Ma- michael angelo and um, uh, in that image that i just when i uh, moved to this poem i asked you to keep in mind the image uh, or as, uh, the image of a sculpture in that image christ is jesus christ is lying across the lap of his mother so this very image is the consistent image um uh, that that is also the dominant image in the river poems the image of the fallen and risen god not just a christian god again the uh, pagan god as well continues throughout the poem so it is all in its uh, multi uh, dimensions that uh, uh, ted use tries to explore a uh, river with all its might according to anskia in christian teachings 
Christ representing the word of God in our world. Word of God, probably reference to the Bible, was broken by the world. Just as the pure waters of the river, the source of life, are broken by human interventions, diverted, channeled, and especially polluted. So, if we see, uh, the, if we keep in mind the image of uh, 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 Mary uh, having Jesus Christ in, in her lap, we see that Mary is being represented by Mother Earth and uh, uh, the Christ is being represented by the river. So, as uh, the as Christ was being tortured and his words were broken by the world. Similarly, the uh, the river that is uh, representative uh, representative of Jesus Christ is being polluted, diverted, and channeled by human beings. They too lie across the lap of the mother or mother earth and they too come from heaven silently dumbly in the form of rain maybe too it was christ's action his sacrifice which spoke louder than words so uh, he uh, ted use creates a very subtle connection between um, uh, earth and um, uh, virgin mary as well as river and jesus christ the brightness of this river, God, is scattered everywhere by light but also buried in caverns, in the earth itself, in dry tombs even. So if we talk about river, wherever it flows, it flows not only uh, to the canal or it meets in the ocean, rather it, the, its water moves to the caverns as well as in the dry tombs. In the extended matter part of the poem, they also represent the spiritless world of matter. So, how um, uh, so the extent to which the world would be dry, this uh, in the dryness that is the absence of river or the absence of water represents a spiritless world. So, the human world, which in religious teachings at the end at, at the rending of the veil will be enlightened to the spiritual mysteries, means. And that uh, the, uh, the spiritual mysteries are unfolded through this image of river. That rending of the veil also literally describes lightning rending the clouds and bringing delivery from the dryness and drought. So as uh, li lightning plays an important role um, in clouds to bring water in the form of rain and uh, So the the lines that uh, the that rending of the veil also literally describes lightning rending the clouds and bringing delivery from dryness and drought, bringing life, giving water so that the seeds may flourish. So the way the cyclical movement of uh, water in the form of river and rain, it is all done by um, the mystic powers, the the powers of divine. Similarly, um, uh, uh, the uh, the light here refers the lighting here refers to the divine light the epiphany that plays an important role in bringing human beings the consciousness consciousness of their existence river so uh, in this sense becomes a source of life so the river being representative of another important element of nature water is a source of life it is the positive energy that you uh, seeks in the river so the river is the very first poem uh, in the river sequence as far as its last poem uh, it is just for your reference that i have included this here uh, uh, salmon eggs the salmon eggs is a poem uh, this is a this is the line again by anskia that i'll read later but as far as the poem salmon eggs is concerned we see that uh, what sort of a fish uh, they are salmon are the fish that it is said about them that where they are born they start traveling from that place they they uh, take a round around the earth round uh, in in the waters and after completing their journey when it's time to uh, lay their eggs they come back to the place where they are born and the moment when they reach there and uh, they lay egg that very moment they die so this is the um, uh, cycle of life and death of salmon that is the fish so uh, 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 I read these lines this final poem marks 
this final poem the final poem of the river sequence marks both an end and a beginning we have reached the end of a year in the river's life and the end of a poetic sequence the poetic sequence the uh, sequence of river poems the poet persona too has reached the end of of his epic journey so river poem is uh, uh, that is the sequence of 43 poems is actually representative of an epic journey of the po uh, poet himself and uh, it is through uh, a submarine journey or it is, uh, it is through marine life water and river that uh, uh, Ted Hughes is exploring uh, uh, many vistas of uh, human existence he has heard earth's tidings and his understanding of the presence of mana in nature is demonstrated in this final poem yet these endings are no more than a still point in the teeming continuum of the cosmos from this stillness new growth will come as it does from the salmon eggs which now rest in the swaddling flow of the river waters so as i told you that uh, salmon they are uh, they die at the place where they are born and they can lay fish only once a life once in a life so uh, we see that uh, it is not life and death that, uh, that that is important in itself rather it is eternity the timelessness that is important that is being represented through the image of river and here we come to to, uh, to an end to the uh, to the discussion of the points and here we i would like to sum up okay ted Hughes, uh, when he talks about on the topic of nature his his topics range from rivers to snowdrop flora and fauna atmospheric conditions and creature life this is what we have already discussed um, we see that human beings they remain the center of his attention nature uh, is introduced or nature is being presented as marginalized something that is ignored and something that is being victimized in the modern uh, modern world but it is very important and vital for human existence and we see that nature uh, for Ted use is also a means of expression it is not that uh, the, all the philosophical or all the uh, metaphysical speculations on the part of Ted use comes from or through natural world and we see for him nature is a redeemer as we have seen um, uh, in the river sequence that how nature stands in the form of the river to have its healing powers uh, Mastriam Letras says in his poetry, use shows the destructiveness of nature and man's conflicts with himself and with the world he lives in. Sagar maintains that use is a brave and sensitive poet who dares to bring more and more of the unknown into the consciousness. So this is again the point that we uh, just uh, we, we discussed right in the beginning that it is uh, to bring into consciousness that unknown element uh, that is important in Ted use he brings to uh, forefront or he highlights those elements in nature that uh, no one has uh, talked about or at least his way or manner of representing those elements is different and uh, he continues he says in the introduction to the new poetry he said that the modern man should use all his intelligence and skill to make poetic sense of all his experience in this world and he suggest uh, and he suggests that this is what use is doing so uh, using all one's intelligence and skill to mo uh, to make poetic sense so poetry in itself is a creation and uh, it's a it's giving voice to the voiceless and that voiceless is uh, voiceless can be nature that uh, voiceless can be flora fauna and the creatural life so the poem in itself uh, is is a symbol of the natural images that Ted use presents in the poem here we come to the end of the lecture here are the works cited list and here I would like to or I would recommend few books uh, to you to go through uh, one is on the third number uh, by Ted Hughes himself that is poetry in the making 
and this is an anthology of poems and programs from listening and writing and uh, if you uh, want to go for uh, more poems by Ted Hughes uh, there is another book for Ted uh, by Ted Hughes that is new selected poems 1957 to 1994 as far as the criticism uh, of Ted Hughes poems or poetry is concerned a very good reading is being offered by uh, let um, mastery and letters the violent art of Ted use and um, uh, another work by Homera uh, Siddiqui uh, Malik Ted use poetry a celebration of negative aspects of human nature so here So that's all. Thank you very much.